on the next Rick and Morty. Don't drop the truth, Tortoise. Also, whatever you do, don't look into its eyes. I, I did look at it, Rick. Now you're going to know everything, Morty. Good job. I, I can't go on like this with the truth, Tortoise, in my head. Come on, Morty. Come with me. What the hell is this? This, Morty, is my archive of all the experiences you've begged me to remove from your life. I call them Morty's Mind Blowers. And we'll be doing this instead of interdimensional cable. Rick and Morty, Sunday at 11.30. New Rick and Morty, everybody, let's break this down. So if you couldn't tell, there were a couple Easter eggs just in this promo alone. But I love the fact that he breaks the fourth wall again just to tell you that there's no official interdimensional cable. And I know everybody's still freaking out about evil Morty. So there's actually like a behind the scenes promo I'll play in a second. And I'll do a follow up video for that later this week, too. So I'm not expecting this episode to follow up too much with that, you know, maybe post credit scene. But in the way that they tricked you last week with a standalone Atlantis adventure, this might actually be somewhat standalone, with the exception of the stuff that they look back on from previous adventures. But if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get everything. There'll be giveaway stuff at the end of the video, too. But really quick, everybody probably picked up that Morty's mind space is sort of mapped out like an M.C. Escher painting. Everybody had to study M.C. Escher during grade school art class. But the time tortoise is the thing that it looks like they plug all these vials into. Morty stares into its eyes, and that seems to be the mechanism for him putting them back in his head. So these are all extracted things that he didn't want to remember because they were too terrible or because they were too unpleasant. But if you zoom up, you can actually read what some of these vials say. It's actually pretty hilarious. Micro tit? What the hell is that? There's a vial that reads virginity. There's one that just says something balls. Something probably terrible happened to his balls. There's even another Gravity Falls Easter egg. There's one that says Stanford here that's blue. The interesting thing, too, is there's only one green vial, and it's right over here. Everything else is either purple, red, or blue. So I wonder what that green one is. Remember back during Pickle Rick when he was in therapy because he was going to the bathroom under his desk in class? There's a vial in here that reads Pocket Poo. Maybe that has something to do with that. But let me know if you could read the labels on any of these other vials. Like, some of these are just meant to be really funny Easter eggs. Some of them are probably pretty genuine, terrible things. But the creature that's chasing them down while they're running with the Time Turtle is actually Morpheus, the Dream Lord from Neil Gaiman's Sandman comics. He's literally the embodiment of all dreams, so he's probably the protector of this realm, or maybe he just rules in this place. But it sounds like what's going to happen is, is they're just going to re-experience some of these and there'll be vignettes and that'll be their version of interdimensional cable. But you'll be viewing it from Morty's perspective as they experienced it in some previous adventure that we've never seen before. So you guys can let me know what you think about that idea. They did say in a previous Comic-Con clip that they would be doing something like this every year, but they were referencing interdimensional cable. But then more recently, they did talk about bringing all the fan favorite characters back. And they said, well, you know, we want to do it in an organic way. Like I have that video where they talk about Evil Morty coming back and not wanting to shackle an entire season to him. And then him just showing up out of the blue in last week's episode. So always take the stuff they say with a grain of salt. But just let me know what you guys think of this in the comments below. And here's the clip with them behind the scenes on Evil Morty. 307 is actually airing after a time when there's absolutely no way to not view the world politically. At the time that we were writing it, it was a creative exercise in what could make the Citadel worthy of its own episode. We've only ever seen little glimpses of what the Citadel really is, and this is a chance to like peel back the layers, explore how, how does it really work. The one thing that maintains across the entire group is that Ricks are in charge and Mortys are beneath them. The longer that we thought about it, we realized that's where a lot of interesting drama comes from. The fun of the episode is treating the Citadel with as much political complexity as America, as South Africa. The heat in the air and the current climate, both politically, ideologically, emotionally, is actually the biggest character in the story and that everyone else is just playing their little Robert Altman part. No one really gets what they want in this episode. They're all given their own little twist endings that definitely aren't meant to be happy. Sometimes human beings have this urge when times are complicated. Man, I wish things were more simple. Well, one character agrees with you in this story, and it's the character that needs to be the least empowered. This candidate, Morty, 
whose true identity is revealed at the end as the character we've met before, has had a plan the whole time and very carefully orchestrated it. I mean, I'm kind of glad we set that up because we got rid of the, fed, the Galactic Fed. And so now we have this like cool new antagonist. I mean, he's really perched in a high position now. There's a lot he could do. That place will never have any bearing over our lives ever again. Unlike that mermaid puss, yeah! We're going back for yeah. seconds. And this is a Morty who was not just one step ahead of our Rick, but one step ahead of all Ricks. The division I see is between the Ricks and Mortys that like the Citadel divided and the rest of us. You know, everything he's saying is the right thing. It's just that he only said it in order to manipulate an entire space station of genius scientists to give him the ultimate power in the multiverse, which is pretty terrifying to think about what that portends. So the interesting thing about that is that they don't confirm when he's coming back, when they're going to follow up with it. Wouldn't it be such a middle finger for them to drop that bomb and then not address it till season four? Now, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they will resolve that in some way, but I think they want to leave threads open in the way they have in previous seasons in case they want to pick up with it in season four or if they feel like they have some other idea that they want to get in and they just don't have time to do everything. I think at the end of the day, they nailed all the social commentary that they were trying to weave into the episode, and the Evil Morty was just a big bonus on top of that. Like, great mythology payoff in an episode that had a lot of deep meaning in it and spoke to a lot of the stuff that's happening in real life. But if you don't care about that kind of stuff, like, some people just want the Rick and Morty fun adventures. It was a great episode that just had those two characters. So I know some people don't like it as much when they focus on the other characters because the show really is built around Rick and Morty. So when they're not really big in an episode, it always feels kind of weird. They even had that on the blackboard in the episode. Every Rick needs a Morty. That's one of the earliest core conceits of the TV show. So I think there were a couple episodes this season so far that felt like they got away from that a little bit. So it's nice when they come back to it in such a big way where you literally have Justin Roiland doing like 99% of the voices in the episode all by himself. When you think about it, because he does Rick and Morty, and this episode was mostly Rick's and Morty's, he did the entire thing almost himself. There were a couple other people, but really it was just Justin going crazy. And he does it so well. I'll be interested to see when we get the commentary for this episode whether or not he had to get drunk in the booth just to do all the different crazy stuff. But we can start spinning theories about why each of these memories is a different color and what that represents. Red might be for things that he's super afraid of, like really dangerous, but one of them is red and is labeled virginity, so I don't know necessarily that he's afraid of his virginity, but I do love the idea that he doesn't want to remember what it's like to be a virgin. What'll happen is, is I'll post new Evil Morty in a couple days, but leave all your Rick and Morty requests in the comments below. Congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Andre1603. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. You can click here for my episode 7 video, and you can click here for more Rick and Morty. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.